You take a seat at the tavern, your eyes watching for the bounty you've been seeking. A nearby pair of travelers rise and begin to draw swords, pushing tables and chairs away as they approach. With a flip of the table, you begin ca to cast Fireball, only for the bartender to shout, NO MAGIC! Roll for initiative. Today we're going to be crafting up some tables, and to do that we're going to use a Jenga block, a couple of these uh, very large uh, wooden tiles, uh, some washers, uh, these are an inch and a half, some coffee sticks, and then I found these little mushroom uh, wood blocks at the Dollar Tree, so we're going to use a couple of them as well, and finally some matchsticks. All right, so to start things off, I got these uh, paddles from uh, Michael's, and they're pretty nice. Uh, they are uh, about half as long as the coffee sticks that I use, so I cut five of them in half, and with a, a fairly liberal application of some wood glue, I'm going to just kind of spread that across one side, and then starting at the center to make sure everything stays relatively even I'm just kind of placing the uh, coffee sticks on and these will get uh, clamped in place with like a binder clip to set aside and dry and while that's happening I did the same thing with one of the washers uh, this will give a very nice magnetic uh, surface for any attachables to clip to Alright, so uh, we're going to start things off by trimming the edges. Now, uh, I'm using a uh, reasonably sharp hobby knife to do this. I would definitely recommend doing this in uh, short cuts. If you do uh, long cuts, you have a very strong risk of uh, the cut going in a different direction than you'd thought, and that can go awry very quickly. So once that's done, I'm using a nail file uh, to just kind of smooth down the edges and give it a quick little bevel to give it the impression of worn and uh, hewn wood. Now I got this at the uh, Dollar Tree in a pack of like five. I would absolutely recommend it. These things are so handy for use in small crafts like this. Okay, so while that is uh, off to the side drying and everything, we're going to make the legs for the table. Now, I use legs as kind of a simple term to denote what's going to be on the underside of the table. Uh, really, it's just going to be the Jenga block with a few support pieces uh, added to it just to make sure it doesn't tip over as easily. So, all I'm doing is cutting a few pieces of the matchstick to uh, fit onto the four corners just as a little bit of an extra prop to help widen the base just a little bit. Now once the wood glue dries uh, it will be a very very strong hold it will not come apart but until it dries they are a little fiddly and you definitely don't want to accidentally nudge them uh, but it takes about 10 minutes for it to dry to the point where it's not going to come off. So, to give it a little bit more of a, a wide base to work with, I'm going to do a couple of quick cuts on a couple of more matchsticks, and these are going to get glued along the bottom of the Jenga block, and this is just going to be a little bit more of a wide base for everything to stand on, uh, just to kind of help it not tip over during gameplay or anything like that. All right, so now that we've got that done, uh, we are going to use a little tool here and just kind of put a indentation in three spots to mark where it is that we want to put a magnet. And then using a four millimeter drill bit, I'm going to carve down into the uh, pad and this is going to drill in just enough to barely uh, dig into the coffee stick and that will be just deep enough for a magnet to go in and be flush. So I'm putting these magnets in in the same orientation from 
uh, all the other magnetized videos I've been doing just to make sure that any magnetized pieces that I attach will all end up facing the same direction. And then a little bit of glue on the bottom, uh, well, actually the top of the Jenga block, and these will just kind of slot together. Now, if they don't fit together quite as nicely as you want, you can always carve a small chunk out of the Jenga block to make sure it fits. I ended up having to do that on uh, two of the magnets. Next, to create a leg for the round table, I'm going to uh, cut the cap off of this mushroom that was from the Dollar Tree and that is going to get glued in place on the bottom of the washer. Now, as you can see, it doesn't quite stay in place, so we're going to mark and then drill a small pilot hole on the cap, top of the cap, and then we're going to also drill it uh, through the table itself. Now, this is going to uh, ensure that the table doesn't come loose during gameplay and uh, will be a very strong hold. Now in order for it to be pinned in place we're going to need a decently rigid material and I cannot recommend this material enough for applications like this and that is going to be uh, paper clips. Now this one has a plastic coating we're going to pull that off and then the piece that I cut is just going to go into the little pilot hole uh, just as deep as it'll go with a little bit of wood glue. Then a little application of wood glue to the underside of the table. Poke it through and you can let this uh, sit to dry. I'm just going to clip it off here uh, and then set it off to the side to dry all the way. Once it's dry, it's not going to move. Now moving on to painting, we're going to do a double coat of raw umber, uh, just like we've been doing in recent furniture videos. This will once again allow us to uh, impart our own coloration instead of relying on the existing color from the popsicle sticks and whatnot. And then we're going to do the same with the uh, round table. Uh, the only difference is I'm doing a uh, triple coat of the paint on the bottom side of the table just to make sure that the washer is fully covered. Once that's done I'm going to do a uh, light to medium dry brush with raw sienna and this is just going to go over the entirety of the piece just to give a nice simple uh, wood coloration. Now I'm also taking care to uh, paint the very bottom of the table, uh, which normally would not be seen at all. This will give players the opportunity to flip the table and uh, not have to worry about uh, breaking immersion by seeing a color that they weren't expecting. Alright, so now we're going to add some uh, metal uh, cladding and uh, straps to the tables. And this is going to be done with the aluminum roofers tape that I found at Lowe's. Absolutely love this stuff. Works very well, behaves exactly like metal does, uh, because it is. So you can beat this up, you can bend it, warp it, uh, puncture it, whatever you want. And that will just give a lot of extra character to the build for a very low cost. Uh, I haven't even gone through a quarter of the original roll that I got. So, on the round table, we're not going to wrap it completely around, we're going to trim off the excess. And then, using a toothpick, I'm going to just very lightly poke a hole, or a imprint, into the tape. And this is going to be our little nail holes for the uh, stripping. Alright, once that's done, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, null oil wash and this is going to add a nice little weathering effect for the metal banding. Now I'm not going to put this on the wood, just on the banding to kind of simulate uh, you know, wear and tear, maybe uh, the impression of rust or whatever you want to call it. Now I'm using null oil, you can definitely use other things for this, it's just kind of what I wanted to go with. 
All right, so here we are with the finished piece. Now, you can do a lot of things with tables. You can set up a tavern scene for a bar fight, or you can also use it to dress up like a small uh, bedroom set or even a study. So thank you everyone for watching. Please hit that like button, subscribe for future content, comment in the comment section, and we will see everyone next episode.